people everywhere that I meet tell me stories about connections that they've had with our products and how important our brands have been in their life. I can tell you right now, I've got Hershey's Kisses and Hershey's Bars in our cabinets back at home. The kids love them. But I also know that Americans' tastes are changing. And as a result, you're changing your portfolio, too. I didn't even realize Skinny Pop was one of your brands. I knew Crave, the jerky, was. And now you're going after Pirate's Booty, too. What, what's happening with the American consumer, and how are you kind of reacting to that? So as a uh, company, we focus very much on consumers and how they're changing their eating habits. And we see a huge opportunity in snacking. Consumers are snacking more and more. Snacking growth is outpacing center of the store growth. And we are in a perfect position to take advantage of that. Uh, many people may not know and may think about us as a confection company. But if you look at our business, we've really been a snacking company um, since our inception and we have deep consumer insights about how consumers are snacking and what we're really trying to do is look at how do we leverage and capture more incremental snacking occasions. And you call it snacky <clears throat> which I think is great. It's really yes. catchy and I know as a consumer just just <clears throat> like uh, what Becky's saying uh, if if I'm in for something important it's it's kisses but when I try to be a good snacker it's skinny pop. Right. By the way the CEO of Costco always has a bag of Skinny Pop around him, too. So. <laughs> I love to hear that. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about that relationship you have from a distribution perspective, because that's also changing. Yeah, so let me start a little bit with our portfolio. Our first priority is our confection business, because consumers are doing indulgent snacking. Yep. They're looking for permissible snacking, as you mentioned. They're looking at snacks at different parts during the day, so we can capture morning, afternoon, evening snacking occasions. Midnight so, snacking. Yeah, midnight snacking. <laughs> so we think, you know, the perfect combination of offering our confection brands and then some of these more permissible snack occasions. But consumers are also changing how they shop. And so we need to win in bricks and mortar, and we also need to win in the digital space. Mm -hmm. But really, it's one continuous journey. Most purchases in store actually start with a connection where consumers online looking for information about what they want to buy. So we believe we're well suited to take advantage of this. Our category management insights relative to managing the shelf if you think about it, digital shelving, digital uh, commerce is very similar to bricks and mortar in that there is a shelf, yeah. there is a shopping cart, and there is a checkout. The difference but I think is, of it as being much harder to capture my attention yeah. online because I'm not walking past the candy aisle at the end as I'm checking out or something. Well, I think I mean, it's just different. So you've got the, the shelf, the cart, and the checkout, but they're in your pocket. So now you need to look at the screen and say, how do you capture that consumer? So the equivalent of, of uh, eye level at shelf is what you show so up customer, online. Right now, customer acquisition cost online versus, versus off is, is what? So we are, our margins are comparable offline versus online, which is, you know, a little bit of a, a myth that people have that it's a much lower margin opportunity online, but it's really not the case. It's a different business model, but we've really thought very thoughtfully about how we capture that. Do you think long term actually that your offline margin actually will be the lower margin because <laughs> the bricks and mortar stores are going to use that as an advertising vehicle effectively for your product, to get you hooked, and then you'll go buy it online? I mean, you know, that seems think, to be sort of the way this is all going to head, no? You no, know, I think we'll see how everything unfolds. But I tell you right now, you know, one of the things we love about our category and that our retailers love is it's a very profitable category. Uh, we invest a lot in our brands and capabilities, and therefore we're able to take price. So we continue to look at our model in that way. So oh. you're coming up to your holiday season with <laughs> Halloween. Yes. So what's your prediction in terms of what's going to be hot this year? Well, right now it looks like it's going to be a good hol holiday season. So for Halloween, we had an excellent sell-in. Mm -hmm. And right now, our proprietary retail sales force is in the stores building display. All of our employees at headquarters are going out helping to build those displays so consumers can find what they want. One of our hottest new items is chocolate in glow-in-the-dark packaging. So oh, as you can that. imagine, people trick-or-treating, and now they get the glow-in-the-dark uh, package in their, uh, in their bag. I need to see that popped snack mix uh, over there. I, <laughs> okay. I can't hear. I'm going to toss it over. Closer inspection. And I also, inspection. am I in that payday for my indulgence uh, thing? But the, but, but There's a me, Reese's peanut butter cup in your minis. Popped. Here. They're popped? Or are they? Uh, oh, those. Yeah, there's yeah, popcorn those. in there. So wow. this is a great opportunity of taking our brands and, and mixing, them, up mixing and them with pretzels and peanuts. That's and a now good you idea. have popcorn. You have a I'll tell you, satiating uh, snack. My, my, and I ask every snack. Uh, developer that comes in for, for the the holy grail which if it can be done it's like you know there's the fountain of youth and then there's 
the carb-free snack. Is there ever going to, you know what people have told me, pork rinds. I can't eat those things. Let's say I'm starving myself <laughs> totally of carbs, no carbs. If I have one carb, my, that ruins everything. What can I snack? The keto situation. The, the, uh, do I do the jerky or something or? Yeah, I think, I mean, we try and offer a range of choices so that when consumers are looking for that indulgent hit, they, want, they may want their Reese. If they want something that's more simple ingredients, I'm uh, stuck clean with the skinny label, pop then. The skinny pop saying. absolutely is a great choice. You see, you uh, got to keep working on this, uh, <laughs> Michelle. You got to, um, I, I want, Pirate's I don't know. Booty, that's huh? where this is headed. Pirate's <laughs> booty's not bad either. It's like eating, that's right. you know, it's like well, eating packing material. Great jerky, you know, a protein snacking, protein you know, snack. lighter snacks. You know, you, you've become an iconic CEO growing up in Hershey's as well. And you've really pivoted the company since you've been CEO. What do you see for the future? What are you looking at? You've done acquisitions, you're doing uh, organic. What does it look like for you? So we continue to be focused on that innovative snacking powerhouse vision. Yep. And I think we are well on our way there. Um, you can see it in terms of what we're doing to invest in our core confections brands. M&A will continue to be a key strategy. Skinny Pop, Amplify, our recent proposed acquisition of Pirate's Booty. Yes. Um, we have done a lot of work to turn our international business to be profitable. So we're seeing good progress there. And then we'll continue to operate in a way where we give back to society. It's in our DNA. Um, the Hershey corporate School. citizenship, yeah, exactly. Cocoa. What are you doing with the farmers? That's right. It yeah. really starts with our founder, Milton Hershey, and he was um, he was one of the greatest social entrepreneurs of all time, and really started the the company, and then left the company in trust for uh, disadvantaged kids. That's great. School.